Welcome to the Guardian Analytics Alert in the Live series. I'm Trisha Ransom from the Customer Education Team. Today, I'll show you an example of fraud from the Guardian Analytics online business solution. Fraudsters often like to perform reconnaissance on accounts to find the best way to commit fraud. For example, the fraudster might spend time viewing reports and check images to learn the account holder's normal transactions and dollar amounts. Fraudsters may also change the user's password or edit their account information to direct any contact from the financial institution directly to the fraudster. Guardian Analytics Online Business analyzes each session from your account holders and assesses the specific activities performed during the session. Guardian Analytics uses machine learning and behavioral analytics to highlight behavioral anomalies. These differences in behavior are your clues to potential fraud. In this video, I'll be assuming the role of a fraud analyst at Acme Bank Corp. I'll analyze a high-risk alert from one of our long-term account holders, Financial Business Incorporated. Guardian Analytics Online Business allows me to analyze the session and the individual activities within the context of both the account holder's history and the history for the specific user who initiated the session. My goal is to build a mental story from all of the available information so I can understand what may have happened during the session. The alert I'm reviewing is the 567th session for Financial Business Incorporated. Financial Business Incorporated has two users, Terry Brown and Chris Smith. I want to focus on the user who initiated this session, Terry Brown. So looking back, I see Terry Brown has not logged in since the 43rd session, over three years ago. It's unusual to see activity after such a lengthy period of dormancy. I make note of this and I add it to my mental story. Now I'll focus on the specific activities Terry or someone else did in this session. Guardian Analytics gives me the ability to quick filter so I only see sessions performed by Terry Brown. This helps me focus all my attention on what is and what is not normal for Terry. I see the user successfully logged in and at once changed their password. The timeline shows me this is the very first time Terry has changed their password. I make note of this and add it to my mental story. Next, the user viewed multiple check images and reports. Looking back on the timeline, I can see this is the first time the user has performed either activity. I'll add both to my mental story. At 10.24, the user edited their personal information by changing the email to a personal email address. And directly after, they changed their MFA security questions and answers. On the timeline, I see that yet again, both are first-time activities for the user. I add both activities to my rapidly growing mental story. Finally, the user viewed three more reports before successfully logging out. The story I have so far is this. Someone logged in and immediately, and for the first time, changed the password. The person viewed multiple reports and check images, which are also new behaviors for this user. The person modified the user account and MFA options, yet more new behaviors for this user. Finally, they viewed several more reports and logged out. Each action on its own isn't necessarily suspicious. However, what strikes me are the sheer number of new activities by the user in this one session. I need to see what else I can uncover about this session to add to my mental story. Risk factors give added context for the activities in the session. They are specific areas of risk that Guardian Analytics has flagged for you in the session. This session has three risk factors, new location, network provider, and non-standard IP type. New location tells me the user is logging in from a new location, Brooklyn, New York. 
I can see that Financial Business Incorporated has a long-established history of only logging in from New York City until this session. A change like this, after years of consistency, is concerning to me, so I add it to my mental story. The next risk factor, network provider, points me to a change in the internet provider. I noticed that until this session, Verizon was the only provider used by either Terry Brown or Chris Smith. Yet now, it's T-Mobile. This is yet another new behavior, and I'll also add it to my story. The last risk factor is non-standard IP type. It tells me something is unusual about how the user connected to the Internet. I can see this is the first time either user has connected via mobile wireless. Yet again, this is a new behavior, and I'll add it to my story as well. So here's my story. Terry Brown, or someone else, has logged in, and this is the first login for the user in more than three years. It's the first login from a new location, Brooklyn. And it's the first login via a new IP type of mobile wireless. Once the person logged in, they performed many activities that this user has never performed before. Changing the password, viewing check images, viewing reports and statements, changing their contact information, and even modifying the MFA security questions and answers. Based on all the information available to me in Guardian Analytics, I cannot reasonably explain the anomalies in this session. I decide it needs further investigation, so I'll open a case in Guardian Analytics to track my investigation. I also decide to contact Financial Business Incorporated directly to figure out if this is a legitimate session or a case of fraud. Before I call my customer, I need to decide how to engage them. My goal is to keep the conversation focused on the facts of what happened during the session. So first, I'll ask broad questions about their processes so I can gain insight about what has happened. Next, I'll move the questions to focus on this specific session. I want to learn who is responsible for this session, Terry Brown or a fraudster? And if a fraudster, how did they gain access? I call Chris Smith, manager of accounting for Financial Business Incorporated, and the other user on the account. I begin by asking him to explain their processes and procedures for online banking. Chris told me he handles viewing checks and reports. Chris also added it's been years since she logged into the online banking platform. I explained what happened in this specific session. Terry or someone else had logged in, changed their password, changed the MFA questions and answers, changed the email address, and had also viewed several reports and checked images. Chris interrupted me. There was no way Terry was any way involved with this session. So I asked Chris to explain how he knows that Terry did not perform this session. According to Chris, Terry has been on her honeymoon in the Caribbean for the past two weeks, and she'll be there for three more days. I asked him if it was possible that Terry could have logged in on the ship and been hacked. Chris said that Terry had left her laptop secured in the office and Chris was looking straight at it. We both agreed this was a fraudulent session, and Chris asked I put a temporary block on the account. Because of the anomalies reported in Guardian Analytics online business and the information gathered during the call with our customer, there was no loss because of this fraudulent session. You can learn more about Guardian Analytics online business on our website at guardiananalytics.com. And don't forget to connect with us on Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. This concludes the alert in the live story. Please comment on the page hosting this video or send comments and suggestions for future alert in the life videos to AITL at guardiananalytics.com.